Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade game repair video for you today. This is a game that we had a while back as Space Invaders. We seems like we get Space Invaders in all the time. It's Space Invaders Deluxe uh, that we sold to a gentleman, a uh, friend of ours, who has an uh, arcade and he's been operating it um, for a while. I don't know how long he's had it, but. Um, so he's been saying that it's got some issues where it get, it's resetting or it doesn't come up or sometimes it'll come up and play and uh, um, uh, then we'll stop working after a while or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to troubleshoot it a little bit and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, we'll pop the back door off and look inside just to make sure everything's in place before we plug it in. So we took the back door off and one thing I see immediately as this came loose so this is the ground it's supposed to go from here up to the tube so you have this little thing here and this goes right there bam not sure that would have really caused a problem though but that's what's going on and then you have the game board here everything looks plugged in properly this particular one has had a new power supply put in it you can actually put a switching power supply um, in these cabinets in place of the original style um, there's a screw sitting there and of course we got our two fuses here so I don't see anything uh, that's uh, out of the ordinary where you wouldn't want to plug it in so uh, we'll uh, we'll plug it in and see what we get out of it we plugged it in and these have an interlock switch a lot of games do basically when the back door is on it holds the switch in which gives it power and the reason they do that is so that in case the back door gets pried off or falls off or whatever kids won't get electrocuted playing in the machine so whenever you're servicing on one you need to pull that out which is the same as it being pushed in so usually it's in the middle when the door's on it holds it in or you can pull it out if you're servicing it so we've got it out and then the power switch is up here on top of the cabinet so we'll turn it on or we'll try to It didn't sound good, did it? Our light is on. So it's making a bunch of noise. Doesn't sound that great. Let's see if we get anything on the monitor. These monitors take a little while to come up and do their thing. Oh, I think our monitors messed up. I don't see any net glow on it. So basically normally that uh, neck should be glowing orange and it's not and things look a little crooked. It may be that the tube is screwed up. Let's see if we can play it without seeing it. I hit the start button. There we go. So it's up and playing. Kind of. The sound. The sounds are a little messed up. Alright, so the game is playing. It's just you can't see it. And it's making a strange sound whenever you turn it on. So let's turn it back off. And let's look a little closer at that neck on the monitor. That doesn't look good at all. doing to me here so whoever put this back on can you see that one pin how it's bent over out of the way it's not in the right spot I don't know if it's focusing properly see the one pin is bent sideways so that's definitely an issue so I'll try to carefully bend that back and then slide the uh, the uh, socket back on it and we'll see what we get 
So I straightened out the pins best I could and I got the socket back on how it's supposed to be. But whenever you turn it on, you don't get any monitor. So I have hooked up our multimeter um, to the monitor power. And the monitor is getting power. It's just not coming on. So next thing I'm going to do is pull out the uh, monitor chassis and see if there's a fuse on it or something that burn up. Okay, so I pulled the monitor chassis out. This is a Motorola KV700A black and white monitor chassis. The fuses are under here, but they're not blown. So this thing, as you saw, wasn't doing anything. So I start looking at it, and there I see this tr this transistor here, Q18, uh, that has like oil all over it. Let me see what I even did with it. Um, oh, did I drop it? Well, it's here somewhere. Well, anyway, it's a tip TIP32A transistor and so this is a TIP 32C transistor so I look it up to see if this 32C is the same as the 32A and so looking around yeah this is just kind of a higher power version but the pins don't line up right so the middle one's a base and one's a collector and one's an emitter and it, it's labeled on the board collectors on one side emitters on the other side the base is in the middle well on a tip 32 it's not like that. The base is on one of the ends. So I'm thinking, why is there a tip 32 in there? That doesn't even make any sense. That you know, they didn't even have them back then. So it's a this is an old monitor, you know, it's from the 70s. So I find the schematics and look it up, and that's supposed to be what Motorola called an A2J transistor. Motorola used their own transistor numbers and then didn't tell anybody what they were, right? So you can't buy an A2J transistor. You have to figure out what it was. Well, somebody has worked on this monitor and put a TIP32 in there, and it ain't right. That's not what's supposed to go in there. So an A2J, other people have figured out, is actually a 2N4400 transistor. So somebody, for whatever reason, and this is all in the power supply too, by the way. So without this working, nothing would ever power up. Somebody has put the wrong transistor in there working on it when whenever I took the the monitor out all of the screws were missing out of it So somebody's had this board out of there working on it So they must have sent it off to somebody and they didn't know what they were doing and then if you look I haven't looked this one up yet, but we got the same thing going on there Someone has put a tip 32a in right there, which that's not the right transistor man doesn't add up. See how it says on the board collector on one side and emitter on the other side? That's not how a TIP 32A is even configured. So that chip's probably wrong. <laughs> so, so I checked. All the fuses are good. The uh, the uh, the three transistors mounted on the side are still good. No problems. I can't find any resistors that are burn up. But then as I'm working through the power supply section, I can't find the diodes are fine, resistors fine, resistors fine. As I get over here, that's the wrong chip. I mean, the wrong transistor. So that's a big no-no. So it might have burned up some other stuff. These, This one resistor that connects to it here looks a little weird. So I'm going to check that on the schematics. So I'm just checking through the power supply section and see if I find more stuff that looks like it's been tampered with or replaced. I'm checking all the resistors to see if any of them's burned up. Because we got a situation where there's no power. So, like, if this big resistor burn up, you know, the power wouldn't get through it, and so you wouldn't get any action. So, either something like that's going on, or this transistor being the wrong one, that could have definitely done it. So, I'm going to keep working through it and uh, see what we run into. Basically, the way these work is they create a power, a voltage, that comes onto the board, and then it runs the, the uh, flyback, which creates several other voltages that runs everything else. So, if that main voltage coming in is screwed up, nothing will work. And we still could be in a situation where the the tubes broke or something. So, um, but we got to get this at least glowing first, where we 
plug it in and it makes a bunch of noise or something to tell us that the tube screwed up but I'll keep working through it and see what else I can find so there's the two transistors look how this thing's got like grease and oil all over it I don't even know what happened there I guess it burned up I don't know <laughs> but I don't even know what happened they had replaced one of the power supply transistors with the wrong one and then they had replaced one of the horizontal deflection circuit transistors with the wrong one. So I don't know. You look in the manual and it tells you Motorola's code number and then if you search around online you see the cross reference. So this is supposed to be a 2N 3440 and they had put in a TIP32 which isn't anything even similar. And then that one was supposed to be a 2N 4400 and they would put in a TIP32. Same thing. I don't know. And I looked around. I couldn't find any resistors or anything else fried. So it could be that um, we've got a situation where the tube's bad or broken and it screwed up some stuff on the board and burned up a couple transistors and they found them but put the wrong ones in. And so now whenever we turn it on, we're not getting anything because those transistors aren't right or something. I don't know. But I know one thing. We're going to go try it back in the machine. So we'll see uh, if it does anything. Okay, so we have mounted the monitor back in. I'm going to hit the power switch. Let's see if it sounds different. Now, if the tube's cracked, if we're getting power, if the tube's cracked, what you'll hear is like, this is like all kinds of crazy stuff coming from the tube, which is basically uh, air hissing in where it should not be. <laughs> so let's see what she does. I'm going to hit the power switch. Okay, I hear high voltage. Yep, look real close at the neck. Do you see the the neck glow? Let me see if I can get a good video of that. You see the the orange in the neck? That's what you want. That's the heater voltage. Well, I'll be damned. Well, our tube wasn't broke. It was just, for whatever reason, they had put two of the wrong transistors in. That is crazy. I don't even understand how that happened. So you saw what happened. You saw the, the let me turn off the lights because it'll look better. Hey, here, and I'll show you the neck glow a little better. Maybe we can see it from the back better with the lights on. Yeah. See the neck glowing? Orange. Okay, so you saw what happened. It wasn't working. Monitor wasn't doing anything. I checked real close. A couple of the pins were bent on the neck board, I mean on the tube. So I replaced, or I straightened out the pins and uh, put it back on, we're getting nothing. No neck glow, nothing. So I take it in the back room, start looking. They've obviously replaced two transistors and that was all that it looked like had been replaced. The, they had replaced the two transistors with the wrong damn transistors. Weren't even close. They had gunk on those two transistors that looked like oil or something. Took the two transistors out Put the right ones in, bam, the monitor comes right up. That's one of the weirdest ones I've done, folks. Let's see if we can adjust the, the brightness knob is right here on these. So basically you turn it up until you can see the background, and then you turn it back down. And that's about as bright as you can get it. Awesome. So. Let's point it up, and I believe it sounded to me like the thump, 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 thump thing is gone, right? So we have done how many videos now showing you how to fix Space Invaders sound problems? Looks like this is going to be another one. So, no thumping, so no, no background sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm... I'm just gonna shoot. After you make like 30 shots or something, 
something like that, excuse me, after you make like 30 shots or something, is when the guy comes out, the UFO. Okay, so the explosion sound works. Our thumping's back. The UFO sound works. Hmm. So the thumping came back after a while. So let's uh, let's look at that soundboard a little bit closer. See if there's something not making good contact or something. So here is our this is the board that makes all the sounds. Um, it has a sticker up here where it's been repaired by El Dorado Games about ten months ago. So at one point this thing worked fine. So you can see they replaced a uh, chip here which is actually I think that's the preamp and then this is the sound amplifier um, then you've got a chip here in a socket so I'm wondering let's look on the schematics there's a basically this motherboard sends a signal onto the board and it makes all the sounds work so let's look on the schematics and see what area does that if it's this socketed chip it may just be dirty or something but I think it it might be this one so uh, let's check out the schematics see if we can track down why the thumping doesn't work and then comes on after a while just for completeness sake this is the the schematics of the manual that I was looking at Q18 is one of the transistors that they were replacing you can see this is in the power supply section which creates the 73 volts and the 12 volts so this transistor is A2J, and they, they had replaced that with a tip 32A. Wrong. So we put the right one in. And then come down to this is Q8. This one had also been replaced with a tip 32A, but it's not a tip 32A. It's an A5F, which is a 2N 3440. Completely different nothing like it so we replaced this one with the right one and apparently that's what fixed it so let's scroll through to the sound all right so we've done several videos on how to fix sound in Space Invaders so basically what you have in the schematics is these are signals coming from the main board and they go through a big socket on the edge of the thing so it could be that it's trying to send the signal through and it's not making good connection because that socket's dirty or something so we're going to remove the daughter board and plug it back in just in case and then the signals run over here and they run to these two chips am I showing that good? so it runs up here to this chip which is a 74174 at E4 and it runs to this chip which is a 74174 at E4 five I believe that says okay and so the data lines run to both chips so if it was a bad connection down here these are the four lines that make the thump 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 right here right so if it was a bad connection from the socket you would probably lose one thump you follow me because there's four different lines that trigger the four thumps and they all run through these resistors and they all run through these diodes and then they run over here to this 556 timer chip and then they run through this uh, M3 and there's a couple caps here involved and things like that okay and then those same data lines the same ones that make it do the thump 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 are these uh, D4, D3, D2, and D1 lines. They also run up here. Now D1 um, comes over here and it, let's see what it does. I don't see what it does. D2, boop, boop, boop. D2 runs through here and makes the missile sound. Well, all of that's working fine and it never fades in and out. D3 comes through here and it makes the explosion sign sound. Well, that's always working fine and it never fades out. And then D4 comes through here and it makes the invader hit sound, which works fine and never fades out. So that kind of proves that D1, D2, D3, and D4 all work fine. So then you, you come down here to E5 and you've got the same thing going on. And then you've also got D0 is handled by E5. 
So D0 runs the saucer hit sound. Well, we haven't hit the saucer, so we don't know if that's working right or not. So it could be that this chip is acting up, right? Because everything's common to this chip. Or it could be that this timer chip is acting up because the four thumps are common to the timer chip, 556 chip. Or it could be that these capacitors are acting up because they're common to that too. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull it out. We're going to swap these capacitors because that's real simple to do. And then we're going to pop it back in and see if that uh, makes it work. Another thing that kind of makes me lean towards the capacitor is that it's heat related. So when it first comes on, it doesn't work right. But then after it's on a little while, it heats up a little bit, starts working right. That's classic capacitor stuff. Capacitors change their capacitance value if they're going bad uh, after they've been on a little while and stuff. You know, so kind of sounds like caps. So we're going to replace those two caps first and then slide it back in. Those will be real simple to change to. We'll slide it back in and see if that fixes our problem. And then I'll play it too and see if I can hit the saucer before the thump um, fades in. So you know what I mean? So like if the thump is missing and the saucer hit isn't mi is missing, well then it kind of points towards this chip because that's all this chip handles. But if the saucer works the whole time but the thump doesn't work for a while, then it has to be something that's just common to the thumping but we'll pull it out first and we'll we'll change those two capacitors because that'll be easy so here is our timer chip our 556 chip someone has already replaced it. that is the one that makes the thump 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 happen along with these four diodes here thump 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 and the caps that we we're talking about that are questionable are these two caps actually right here because if you look on the schematics they're after h3 4.7 tantalum, 10 mf tantalum, which is these two caps. So we're going to swap those first. And then if, if you look real close at this 556, see how it's not soldered in there all that great? See that top pin? That's connecting it to the to the uh, 5 volt, I think. So that would also cause a problem if that's like an intermittent connection. So we're going to re-solder all that stuff. Now we could just replace that chip, but once they've replaced it, and that's a fairly new looking chip, somebody's done that in the last couple of years, once they've replaced it, it's probably fine. You know, you're probably not going to have the same chip die on you right after it's been replaced. You can see that bottom, um, that bottom trace looks a little weird too. So we'll, we'll reflow some of that stuff. We'll swap these two caps out with nice new electrolytic caps. And then we'll pop it back in there and see if that, uh, fixes our issue where it doesn't do the thumps whenever it's first turned on. Okay, so I think we've got it. So I've got it turned off. All I did was replace those two caps. I reflowed the uh, solder on that 556 timer chip and I put it back in the machine. So we're going to turn it on and uh, I'm going to coin it up before the monitor even warms up. We're going to try to start it immediately to see if it's a, you know, if the thumping is, is there from the very beginning. So, yeah, okay. So we haven't tried all of the sounds yet, so let's see if we can get... The UFO hit sound. left is the the extra man sound and the sounds are a little weird like this one when it shoots and hits them it sounds a little different than some of them 
That's because of the way the sounds are created. It's not a digital sound. It's an analog sound, so it's... Oh, here we go. Hey, how you doing? Could be better. <laughs> Give me a second. No problem. We gotta get our uh, free bass sound here. I wonder if they've got it where you even win a free man. <laughs> did not make a sound. Oh, all right. So I tested again after the customer left just to make sure that uh, everything was as I thought it was and it was true. Whenever I got a bonus missile base, which is what they call it, it did not make a noise. Now, look at this. It's H4, number f the 556 timer, which is the same one that makes the thump, 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 thump. So we're on to something here, people. We've got our thump, 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 thump back but we don't have our bonus missile base. But I just re-soldered that chip, so I probably messed something up. I don't know it, I don't know if it was working beforehand though, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and use a multimeter and check all of these connections. And then I'm also going to check this cap right here too. That doesn't look right. Oh, somebody's already replaced it. So, I'm going to check all the connections and everything and then Worst case, we might have to swap that chip again, but I think it's just going to be a bad connection. And then if you look, the output of it is right here. It goes into this M3, this H3 chip, which is also what this one goes into. So we've got a problem with either H4 or H3 on both types of sounds. So I'm just going to check all this with a multimeter, and we'll see if that fixes our problem. By the way, this is the worst sound to have a problem with because it takes you... It takes you a while. To, you have to play it for three or four minutes to get a bonus missile base to see if it's uh, working or not. But... We'll, uh, we'll multimeter it all out and see what we come up with. So I went ahead and just replaced the chip. It did, I didn't like the way it looked. I put a socket on it too like it should have had before. And uh, put a new one in and so we're going to try it out. Um, we won't know if the problem was the connections or the, the actual chip, but we'll see if this fixes it, hopefully. So we need our thump 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 sound to still work because it's controlled by that. And we need our extra missile base sound to still work. So we're back up and running. Let's see if our thump 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 still works. Yes. Now I was saying earlier, if some of the sounds sound a little different, it's because they're analog sounds. They're not a digital recording. So they're made with resistors and capacitors and little amplifier chips so you saw you saw how they're made on the board so in other words if the resistor is a slightly different value it'll make the sound slightly different I missed him, but I shot him earlier, so you heard it. Got you, sucker! I got you, sucker!
So we've got three bases, see, at the bottom. Shortly we will win another one. See how that happened? Was that the right sound? Or was was that the right sound? Or was ah <laughs> oh, man? I gotta do it again. You see how they do me? Now how often can you get a? So the noise I heard was from that, but it also gave me an extra bass, but I didn't hear the sound. So I still don't know. Unbelievable. So you get one of 1500 points. So we're gonna die and then try it again. I think it's still messed up. All right, we're gonna try it one more time. Here we come. Here we come, people. Won't be long now. We're at 1,200. 1,340. We've got two bases. There we go. I don't want to do it while he's making noise. Yeah, see, I got another bass, no sound. Mm, mm, mm. We got to go back, folks. We got to go back. So if you look on the schematics, it actually works through this H3 chip twice before it makes its thing. And uh, I checked all these resistors. All the resistors are the right value or close enough. And then the thump, 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 thump also went through the H3. So uh, it very well could have been H3. So we have swapped H3. It's a 7411. So we'll, uh, we'll see if that gets us anywhere. Hopefully. Keep your fingers crossed, people. This video is going to get really long if this doesn't fix it. Oh, my God. 
Okay, folks, we've got two bases. Here we go. We're close. Here we go. All right, how sweet it is. So we did it. So it was, it was the 7411 chip. Seen it a million times. Pretty wild, huh? But we got it going there. So there, there we go. So we fixed the monitor, and then we fixed uh, the thump, thump, thump was missing, and the uh, other one was missing. Now it could be that that 7411 chip was the problem with both, and it was just a after it was on a while, it got a little better. Who knows? But I think we're good now. So if you like the video give us a thumbs up now oh i was going to say earlier i didn't fully explain it when these came out so the way they make their sounds is analog so they have resistors and capacitors and stuff so they do they do it with voltages running through a amplifier chip right so my whole point is resistors so say if say it was designed where in this one spot it needs a 1000 ohm resistor well they're never exactly 1000 ohms they have a tolerance so most of them are five percent or ten percent which means it can be 900 ohms or it can be 1100 ohms if there's a 10 percent tolerance well if you have a 900 ohm resistor in it in one board and an 1100 ohm resistor in another board those two are going to sound slightly different wherever that resistor is because it's it's changing voltages and waves and things like that so if you get one of these and like this one the sound is a little bit different than some of the other ones i've heard if you get one of these and the sounds are just slightly off on some of the stuff you're not ever going to be able to fix that um, because it's just minor little things. So there you go. Leave your comments below. Tell us what you think. Give us a thumbs up, like we said, for taking the trouble to film it for you. And we hope this uh, helps you fix your uh, Space Invaders or Space Invaders Deluxe uh, if you get one in. And we'll see you on the next video.